Uh, today, I will be talking on how to approach patients uh, with acute coronary syndrome by ECG methods. So it's basically an electrocardiographic approach to acute coronary syndrome. And in this context, I would like to uh, remember Professor Haynes Williams, one of the famous electrophysiologists who was trained around many electrophysiologists of five continents, and he's no more with us. He has passed away last week. And his immense contribution to acute coronary syndrome electrocardiographic evaluation cannot be uh, underestimated. I, I can even say he, he can be called as the father of approach to acute coronary syndrome ECGs. So I would also like to acknowledge my mentor, Dr. Ash Lokanwala. So with this, I will start. So uh, you may ask me, what is, is, is it, even today, is it relevant to use ECG for evaluating patients with acute coronary syndrome? You may just see, ask me that uh, uh, angiographic, angiogram has become uh, left and right being practiced everywhere and cath labs have come everywhere. But even today, I will say ECG is the widely available and easily available um, technology that can be used and in a time-bound fashion, it can be used to save the patient's life. So ECG utility has not died. So, so we should learn and know how to interpret ECGs in patients with acute coronary syndrome. And this is not for cardiologists. This is not for MD physician. This, this even includes MBBS doctors also. So whatever specialty he, may, he, he or she may be in, uh, or whatever may be the situation, patient can have a post-operative MA or a perioperative complication, so they should be adept in ECGs in acute coronary syndromes. So what is the relevance? So how to diagnose acute myocardial infarction, the most important thing, and what is the severity? What is the extent of myocardial damage that is involved? And what is the vessel, which is the vessel that is involved? Whether it is left coronary artery or right coronary artery, all this can be picked up from the ECG itself. So it's a very cheaper method and it's a very cost effective will say and it can it can save the patients especially in patients coming from remote area and even today in covid times pandemic where primary pca is not being used that extensively because of fear of covid uh, infection and ecg uh, ecg has gained more relevance than before so we all know that acute coronary syndrome can be divided into non st elevation acute coronary syndrome and st uh, st elevation acute coronary syndrome that ST elevation acute coronary syndrome is due to complete occlusion, which is going to produce ST elevation or newly onset persistent LBVB. Non ST elevation acute coronary syndrome is usually due to a partial subocclusion, which is going to result in ST segment depression and T wave inversion, right? Or sometimes that can be very rarely ST elevation can be there in non ST elevation acute syndrome, but that is usually going to be very transient. So this is generally for non-cardiologists, for primarily for physicians. We have two main on the left side of the heart or on the left ventricle is primarily supplied by the left coronary artery, which divides into left anterior descending artery, which runs anteriorly in the anterior interventricular septum, left anterior descending artery, which gives rise to two important branches, septal branches and diagonal branches. Septal branches are medially placed and lateral branches supplies the lateral wall of the left ventricle and the septal branch of the LAD supplies the interventricular septum. Whereas the left circumflex artery supplies the lateral wall and in some patients supply the posterior wall of the heart. Coming to the right side, the right from the right coronary sinus of the iota, right coronary artery arises, which predominantly supplies the inferior and the posterior wall of the left ventricle. Also, the RV branch of the RCA supplies the right ventricle. And, and the conduction system of the heart is also supplied by the LAD uh, or the left coronary system and the right coronary system. Primarily, the SA node and the AV node is supplied by the right coronary system and the Hessian and the infra Hessian system. That the His bundle and the bundle branches are primarily supplied by the left coronary system. So when we place the leads, we should be very uh, adept which leads represent which wall of the heart. We all know that B1, B2 represents the septum of the heart because they are midline placed. And B2, B, B2 to B4 or B, B1, B2, B3 represents the pure true anterior wall of the heart. Whereas B5, B6, they represent the lateral valve. AVL and lead one supplies the, uh, or represents the lateral wall of the left ventricle. Whereas 2, 3 AVF, they represents or uh, they points towards the inferior wall of the left ventricle. Whereas posterior wall, we don't routinely take B7, B8, B9. Hence, we have to see for ST depression in B1 to B4 because the ST segment depression in B1 to B3 or B1 to B4, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the context of acute syndrome, we have to think of posterior wall MI. 
So we all know that why there is ST elevation. ST elevation occurs in patients with MI. There are two hypotheses. One is the systolic current of injury. Another is the diastolic current of injury. Out of which diastolic current of injury is more important and more relevant. Electrocardiography cannot uh, document more uh, very important documents like magnetocardiography. So what it says that during systolic current of injury, during the systole, that is represented by the QRS, the current of injury is always directed towards the injured area. Hence, in anterior volume, there is going to be ST elevation in V1 to V4. That's the primary hypothesis. So we all know this basic thing. If, to say ST segment elevation, the ST segment elevation should be there in two or more than two contiguous leads. What is contiguous leads? If it is anterior, it is V1 to V4. If it is inferior, it is 2, two 3 AVF. If it is lateral, 1 AVL or V4, V5, V6. So if it should be at least in two, con two or more than two contiguous leads. And the ST segment elevation should be at least more than one millimeter in height in amplitude. Whereas for posterior wall infarction and for right ventricular infarction, even if the ST segment elevation is going to be more than 0.5 millimeters, it is sufficient, right? So this is, oh, this is a very common ECG you would have seen. You can see L6 or diagonal occlusion. Diagonal is a branch of LED can produce lateral wall MI. That is one AVL V5, V6. Whereas to point the anterior wall MI, we have to look into V1 to V4. Whereas inferior wall MI, RCA or L6, 2, 3 AVF, right? Yes, we will show. Uh, so we will now from here onwards, I will show all the real patients examples so that uh, the understanding will be better. So he's a 81 year old doctor, severe chest pain. He, he lives in the hills. So he has come to the uh, it's a nearby town for shopping. So he had a severe chest pain diaphoresis and he went to a nearby hospital where the ECG was done. What is the ECG showing? There is going to be a diffuse monophasic ST segment elevation seen from V1 to V6, right? Also, if you see AVR, very please carefully note AVR. AVR also shows ST elevation. So when you have an ST elevation AVR and also in the anterior leads, it means it's a proximal or osteoproximal LED occlusion, or sometimes this can also represent a LMC occlusion also. Also, very carefully see the inferior leads. This is called reciprocal ST segment depression. So when you have an ST segment depression in the opposite leads, like inferior leads, this means the occlusion is proximal. Proximal occlusion means it is the starting of the vessel. So why it is important? If the vessel occludes at the beginning itself, it is very dangerous. Whereas if the occludes at the middle portion or if it is at the, at the end of the vessel or it is a distal portion, then it is not as dangerous as the proximal occlusion. So this is called a tombstone pattern. What is tombstone? We all seen in the movies or we have seen in the crematories, like this is the monophasic. So if you see the ST segment elevation is like monophasic pattern, that it means this patient is going to die immediately. So you have to be very quick in all ST segment elevation, you have to be quick, but in this juncture, you have to be quick, as quick as possible. So, so this patient, this patient presented to a center where there is no cath lab facility. So he should not be, this patient should not be referred for a primary PCA because he has to travel for more than an hour. He may die in the way. So he's promptly uh, thrombolized with retiplase. And after retiplase, you see post thrombolysis ECG analysis is also very important. See the ST elevation, the tomb, the tombstone pattern has gone. The ST elevation has resolved. Also one important thing, there is T inversion, right? The T inversion, what is the importance of T wave inversion? So in a patient with ST segment elevation, if you see a T inversion after thrombolysis, that means the vessel is recanalized. It, it recanalized means, so it, it may be slightly occluded, it may be still 90% stenosis, but that five to 10 percentage it has opened so that the flow has started to go through the myocardium that is sufficient enough to keep the myocardium surviving. So the T wave inversion of the thrombolysis is a sign of myocardial reperfusion. So how will you know that the patient is successfully analyzed? Once symptomatically, patient will become better, pain will become better, arrhythmias, heart failure, pulmonary edema will improve, the patient is in cardiogenic shock and will improve, and ST segment elevation will reduce by at least 50 percentage. I have already told you, T inversion is an important sign, and sometimes you will get what is called accelerated idioventricular rhythm, right? So this is the pre and post retiplase ECG, very, very important. So coming on to the next pattern of ECG is a 45-year-old male with chest pain. So if you see this, see, please look at V1 to V5. You can see a ST elevation. Also, if you see the V1 lead, there is right bundle branch block, right? So what is the importance of right bundle branch block in the setting of uh, acute anterior wall MI is that the right bundle is supplied by the septal S1 branch. That is the large septal, the first 
fans of your lady so very important if there is going to be a right bundle match block then it is always hostile in lady or proximal occlusion because it is the occlusion before the septal s1 branch so which results in right bundle match block occlusion right so very important and again this is an emergency this patient has to be either immediately taken for primary pca or it has to be immediately thrombolyzed the extent of myocardial damage is going to be very severe since it is going to be the starting of the vessel and the prognosis is not good as compared to a middle lady or a distal lady so you have to be quick and you have to be fast so this is the ecg in this patient you can see this is the left main and here it is blocked so normally the black color dye should go all the way this l6 is okay but you can see there is abrupt cut off 100% occlusion of the lad and you can see after stenting you can see a beautiful vessel that is reconstructed and this patient survived this may extensive uh, anterior volume may cure will be anterior volume so cure will be anterior volume is always it 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 is it, it, it presence with pulmonary edema or cardiogenic shock and this patients don't give much time so you have to be very prompt so this is after successful thrombolysis after successful recanalization or after successful uh, so primary pca you can see the qrbb has disappeared the disappearance of qrbb after stenting is a very good sign and and this patient uh, is doing well and you can see the st elevation has gone down so what is this again this is a middle aged male presented with qrbb so outside center has been thrombolysed so echo but in echo there is no rwma uh, 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 the daily function is fairly good so in this pandemic era if this patient is going to have such a thing so so you to always check for covid and this patient turned out to be covid positive and is nothing but covid myocarditis somehow covid myocarditis involves the basal portion of the heart basal left ventricular involvement is more covid myocarditis so what is going to happen this patient may present with anterior volume so actually uh, there has been a good article published in nigm where this this covid patients were presented like anterior volume i can say anterior volume mimic but on angiogram there there there, there is no obstruction the coronary So you have to be very very careful. The echo may be uh, the echo may not show regional motion or WMI of the LAD territory, or it may be a global hypokinesia. You can see so very important in this era. And what is this? This is again a uh, middle-aged male with crushing chest pain since four hours. If you see here, the ST elevation is seen in from V1 to V5. Also, you can see that uh, the ST elevation in AVR again. You can see. This, this is the lady see so the wire is passed here the lady this the, the, the this wire should have a beautiful uh, dye filling but here that is completely occluded and this is ballooning and this is reconstruction of the vessel so one of the dangerous arrhythmias or one of the dangerous uh, anti uh, stellation mi is nothing but osteoproximal lady occlusion this is another male if you see the difference between the last ecg and this ecg here the st elevation is seen in one avl also in v5 v6 in addition to the anterior leads this means the occlusion is proximal to the diagonal you can see this left side panel is the lad the left anterior descending artery is occluded see this blue arrow whereas you see the right side after pca the lad is reconstructed also if you can see the side a small branch is coming that is the diagonal branch so when the diagonal branch is occluded not only v1 to v3 or v4 stellation will be there but also one and uh, avl and v5 v6 so this is what this is a proximal lady occlusion before diagonal so if, if the occlusion occurs before diagonal you can have you can have an anterior presolateral or amethyst is known as anterolateral mi okay what is what is happening here here this patient 50 year old male patient was having severe chest pain since 6 hours drop i was positive and you can see here the st elevation is there in one and avl right whereas what happens here this st is a good amount of st segment depression in v1 to v3 and what is what else you are seeing you are seeing a white qr so whenever in a patient with acute coronary syndrome if you have if you see any ecg is either with st elevation up or st depression but if the qr is going to widen that is again one of the ominous sign this patient will have a very critical ischemia so white qr is in the setting of acute coronary syndrome why it is happening because of the localized hyperkalemia whenever there is a tissue ischemia there is going to be a localized hyperkalemia your serum potassium may be normal but the localized myocardium there is going to be excess of potassium ions there and this potassium causes slowing of the contraction and because of that there is going to be a white qrs so this patient if you see the uh, angiogram it was a very deadly uh, disease this patient presented with so this presented the he presented the left main artery 
uh, occlusion. Uh, sorry, the slides are inverted, but if you can see the distal left LMC is 95% uh, occluded with no flow in the LAD or the LCX, whereas this is after successful left main to LAD and LCX tinting. So, what is the importance? The importance is if you have a white QRS in the setting of ST segment elevation or ST segment depression, it is very, very dangerous, right? Coming to inferior wall MI. So we all know that inferior wall MI either can be due to a right coronary artery occlusion or a left coronary, left circumflex occlusion. It's very simple. Left circumflex the axis is primarily directed towards the lead two, which is primarily in the left side. Not in the left side, but it is more towards the left side. Whereas lead three is oriented towards the right side. So whenever there is going to be a right coronary artery occlusion, the, the lead three will show more ST segment elevation than lead two. Also, one and AVL, if you see lead one and lead AVL, the ST segment depression is going to be there. And AVL ST segment depression is going to be more than one. So whereas in right, uh, whereas in the left circumflex coronary artery, the ST segment elevation in lead two is going to be greater than lead three ST segment elevation. And lead one and AVL, they may be an iso isoelectric ST segment or they at times they can show ST segment elevation also, right? It's very, very simple. So right coronary artery, it's towards lead three and left coronary artery, it is towards lead two. So this is what I already told you. Okay, so now coming on. So now we you can all uh, just see, this is a uh, middle-aged male with severe chest pain. So what you see here, there is ST segment elevation in the inferior list. You can see very easily two, three AVF. So, but the height of ST segment elevation is greater than lead three and lead two, this is very easy. Also, if you see ST segment depression, AVL, then it means nothing but what is this? This is nothing but what? Right coronary artery occlusion, right? So also in almost all patients with inferior LMA, you should always promptly take a right-sided V4, a right-sided leads, especially V4R, because ST segment elevation in V4R is going to say that not only it is RCA, but it is proximal RCA occlusion. So here also one more point, if you see in V1, the V1 ST segment elevation is there. You can see somebody will say this is V1 to V3 ST segment elevation. Somebody will say this is as anterior volume plus inferior volume. But this is not anterior volume plus inferior volume. It's actually inferior volume and a proximal RCA occlusion. Why do I say it's a proximal RCA? Because if V1 shows ST segment coving, ST elevation, mild elevation is there, or even if it's isoelectric, that means the RV branch, RV branch is one of the branches arising from the proximal part of the RCA. So RV branch supplies the right ventricle. We all know that V1 is placed on the right side of the sternum, which represents the right ventricle and the septum. So if right ventricle infarction is there, then it means that proximal RCA is occluded. So V1 shows ST segment elevation. So this is nothing but this is RCA occlusion. And this is proximal RCA occlusion. And if you see the V4R here, there is definitely V3R, V4R, V5R, there is going to be ST segment elevation is there segment elevation in V4R is very dynamic. It is seen only in the very acute stages. If you are going to take after some time, it may disappear. And ST segment elevation need not to be more than 1 or 2 mm. Even if ST segment elevation is more than 0.5 mm, it is very significant. You can see the angiogram in this patient. The right coronary artery, this is approximately occluded right coronary artery. And you can see after thrombus section, you can see a lot of thrombus there. A good RV branch is coming from here. This is the reason for ST segment elevation in that patient in V1. And this is the final result. You can see the RCA is completely reconstructed. So very important. So what I, what happens here? This is another patient, middle-aged male with chest pain since two hours. So what will you diagnose? How will you diagnose? Is this is this a non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome or ST elevation acute coronary? How will you act? Suppose if you are in a PCA enabled center, there is there is no issue. You are going to anyhow take the patient for angiogram and you have to proceed. Suppose if you are in, in a non-PCA or a non-cath lab center, how will you treat this? You will treat this, will you lyse this patient or you don't like this patient, uh, lyse this patient? So if you see very carefully, you should not call this patient as a non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome. Though there is no visible ST segment elevation, you can see V2 to V4 or V5 and there is good amount of ST segment depression. So rest of the leads, there is no much change. So when you have an isolated ST segment depression in V1 to V5, then you have to always think of posterior wall MI. So you have to, what you have to do, you have to take uh, the posterior leads, V7, V8, V9. So in this patient, proximal L6 was 100% occluded. So we did a PCA in this patient and this is a very good result. So suppose if this patient presents to you in a center where there is no, no angiogram available, please do a V7, V8, V9. And if, if it is going to be more than 0.5 mm ST segment elevation, you have to lyse this patient, thrombolyse this patient. Not just giving heparin is going to do because you can see the vessel is huge and it is proximally occluded 
okay so post ul ma is frequently misdiagnosed even by cardiologists and frequently under treated okay so post ul ma is not something benign somebody will say anterior ul ma is only very dangerous post ul ma is no no it's not like that even a small occlusion even a pda occlusion even a small occlusion of any branch can produce ischemic ventricular fibrillation and may kill the patient so it is very important as i have told you if st st segment elevation is there in v7 to v9 more than 0.5 mm so in post ul ma may be associated with inferior ul ma so you can have st segment elevation in lead 2 lead 3 uh, avf so but sometimes post ul ma can be very much isolated also so the the inferior leads may not show any change or there may be a minuscule q wave in 2 3 avf that may be unsuspecting you may miss it so it's very very important right and also sometimes in v1 you have a positive r wave so one of the differential diagnosis for abnormal r wave in v1 is nothing but a posterior wall mi again this is another class another another classical example you can see we want to so you have a r wave a good r wave is there and you have good amount of st segment depression in v1 to v3 and if you take v7 v8 v9 there is mild st segment elevation right it will not be very frank uh, very gorgeous st segment it will be like mild st segment elevation but you, have, you should not miss it and if you reverse it and you can just this is called the mirror image appearance if you see you see if you show it in the mirror and see this is a mirror image st segment elevation classically seen in post ul mi and this is another patient we can see the lpda or the mid l6 is occluded once you reconstruct a large lpda and, uh, and another om is coming on so very